the truth is she didn't look like she defended anything. Why you chose this woman? Because she looks like she can barely defend herself. So how the hell are you going to get her to go out there and defend the entire Republican Party and the Republic itself? It's so strange. So, after every State of the Union, the opposing political party that is not in power at the time has a chance to rebuttal the State of the Union. This time around, it just happens to be the Republican Party. The Republican Party has chosen Senator from Alabama, Katie Britt. Now, let's see what she has to say. Before we get into the video, I need to tell you a secret. I need you to hit the like and the subscribe button. I need to fight against the YouTube algorithm. Because I'm on the road to 1,000. I'm going to need all the help I can get. Let's get into it. I never could have imagined what my story would entail. To think about what the American dream can do across to just one generation in just one lifetime. It's truly breathtaking. But right now, the American dream has turned into a nightmare for so many families. The true unvarnished state of our union begins and ends with this. Our families are hurting. Our country can do better. And you don't have to look any further than the crisis at our southern border to see it. President Biden inherited the most secure border of all time. But minutes after taking office, he suspended all deportations, he halted construction of the border wall, and he announced a plan to give amnesty to millions. We know that President Biden didn't just create this border crisis, he invited it with 94 executive actions in his first 100 days. I got to be honest, when I first heard her speak, she reminded me of what Donald Trump would say was somebody out of central casting. It seems so fake and so emotional, and I'm so shocked that, uh, you know, the Republican Party chose somebody like her to represent the rebuttal. And she just has this word salad of platitudes. It's like, the State of the Union, how, how could we ever fight against Joe Biden? Just the way she does it seems, you know, fake. It almost seems like they're falling in, the Republican Party is falling into the trap of the Democratic Party's woke, you know, glue trap for rats. Basically, you know, we shouldn't be trying to outwoke the Democratic Party. Because honestly, I mean, at, at times it starts to look like she's about to cry in, in, in the middle of her kitchen. You know what I mean? So it just seems strange from the perspective of leadership. Instead of actually showing emotion of like anger and actually something real it, honestly it looks asmr -y. It, it seems fakey really it seems so much like a script that it kind of turns you off and to be fair then she moves in on you know critiquing joe biden first say repealing the deportation the amnesty you know just basically setting us up for what we're facing right now which again i agree with but the way she went about it it seemed a little fake from my perspective and then she goes on to say you know joe biden inherited the most secure border of all time in american history i don't know whether that's true or not but the way she said it the way she went about it almost seemed you know fake why they chose this woman to do it is beyond me truthfully there were so many other people that they could have chose they could have chose john kennedy from louisiana or the attention right now is on president biden's age and it's true that it takes longer than a trip to jupiter uh, for him to walk across the stage and his inflation is a cancer on the american dream I, if you believe the polls the president is polling right up there with uh, with chlamydia. Tommy Tuberville. Hell, they should have chose Marjorie Taylor Greene. She would have been an amazing woman to go out there and, and defend values, conservative values. But it almost seems like they wanted to find somebody that would, you know, they probably polled and said, this woman polls really good for women voters. A and they tried to play the same woke game as the Democratic Party does. And it's crazy. I mean, this woman went out and she seemed like an actor and trying to get her to defend conservative values. The truth is, she didn't look like she defended anything. 
why you chose this woman? Because she looks like she can barely defend herself from trans athletes taking over female sport. So how the hell are you going to get her to go out there and defend the entire Republican Party and the Republic itself? It's so strange. So we continue with another clip of uh, Katie Britt here, you know, going back on her aspirated, you know, consternation of Joe Biden. And then really, let's see what she has to say. Right now, our commander in chief is not in command. The free world deserves better than a dithering and diminished leader. America deserves leaders who recognize that secure borders, stable prices, safe streets, and a strong defense are actually the cornerstones of a great nation. I mean, it's kind of sad to watch, right? Honestly, when I first saw it, I, I didn't, because I didn't have no idea who this woman was. Apparently, she's a senator from Alabama. Her husband was in the NFL, played football. I, I wasn't up to date on who she actually was. And for good reason. When I watched this this rebuttal, it looked like a failed, you know, on the cutting room floor skit from Saturday Night Live. I actually truly thought this was a parody. I thought it was a joke. It, it was the dumbest move that the Republican Party has made. If this wasn't recorded, okay, I give it a little bit of leeway, but I still would say I want to hear you say these things out loud before I, I give you the position to, you know, give the rebuttal. If this was a recorded rebuttal, it was dumb. You should have had somebody so much stronger. You're trying to be the woke SJW types, like Democratic Party. This uniparty nonsense, I would have thought this woman was part of the Democratic Party. Because it doesn't feel like she's defending anything. Why are you sending her out there looking like somebody from Saturday Night Live? In her kitchen, of all places, this does not show leadership. This looks like a TikTok mom who drank a little too much on the weekend and wants to go out there and wag her finger at Joe Biden, give her a piece of her mind. Whatever her argument was kind of got bypassed and forgotten because of how cringe-worthy this really was. Honestly, this is AOC level. I mean, AOC, especially, we have a clip of AOC defending men's rights to get into female sports. And see, you need to shove a little strength, a little bit of backbone, a little chutzpah, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, AOC is no, you know, intellectual giant. But she goes out there with conviction on trying to wreck female sports by allowing men to take over. So basically, let's, let's check out a clip from, you know, the dummy AOC on why it's okay to allow men to take over women's sports men attempting to restrict the rights of women and telling us that it's for our own good. Um, but I want to dive a little bit more deeply into why this issue with targeting trans women in sports is particularly problematic, not just for trans girls, but for all of us. We're here today because there's a proposal here, and there are several proposals here, uh, to further marginalize trans women in sports. And I think about this all the time because trans people in the United States doesn't even exceed 1% of our population. And yet there is so many resources and energy and time dedicated to figuring out how we can more finally exclude them um, from our sports. In this guise, under the guise of not only trying to further marginalize trans women and girls, we are talking about opening up all women and girls to genital examinations when they are under age. That's right. Potentially just because someone can point to someone and say, I don't think you're a girl. That's correct. And, and this also deeply intersects with a secondary issue, which is racial bias in the medical field. When we have vast proportions of populations that have been studied and tested are not right racially or otherwise identity-based representative of the broader U.S. population. And so what gets determined as a norm oftentimes gets pegged to largely white populations that have been studied and then black women and girls are then further subject to to um, marginalization this, this has been in your experience and what you've seen as well right that's correct began to say 
uh, you know, it's not just about trans girls, it's about all of us, you know, she's throwing actual females, biological females, and, and, you know, men who want to be women in the same bucket to say that they're in it together, when right there, again, that's not helping any woman in any woman's sport at all. And then she continues to say, you know, they're trying to push the, the, the initiative to check everybody's genitals before we allow them to play any sports. But my complaint is you don't have to do that. There's no reason to do that. It's already been done for us. We have birth certificates. We have birth certificates. Let's be clear. There's zero genders and there's only two sexes, male and female. And only one of those are on your birth certificate. Are you telling me the birth certificate is null and void? It's invalid. It's not good enough to use. Let's just use that. We have a static document. It doesn't change. It shows us who we are. But that's not good enough. Because people like AOC, she doesn't want a logical response. And then somehow they turn it to their favorite thing, race. Somehow it's it's become a racist thing. Because she's basically saying they did the studies and they used only white people for the study as if black people are so biologically different than white people i gotta be honest with you aoc a trans man a trans woman they're either men or women biologically it's irrelevant whether they're black or white because we're we're almost the same thing it doesn't change there's no variations in human beings Unless you're trying to make the argument that somehow, some way, that, you know, black people are different kind of trans. And then she brings up the smallest of minorities of intersex people. We should not govern and make rules and laws and change policies the basis of, you know, 0.0001% of the population. The vast majority of people, and when I say vast, almost all, we could virtually say all people, fall into the binary system of man and woman, male and female. That's it. That's what our world is. And then to add the cherry on top, she also allows the president of the National Women's Law Center to speak on this as well. And success in school sports depends on a whole range of factors, including how hard you work and coaching and access to really good resources and facilities. And trans students participate in sports for the same reason as their kids, because it is fun, because it creates belonging and community, because it teaches so much about persistence and leadership and and discipline, unless they learn to lose gracefully, hopefully. And often they learn to win with dignity, hopefully. Um, they learn to do the sort of work that means you have higher grades and stay connected to school. I want every kid to have that chance, to have the chance to play. So I feel compelled to just end my testimony with a few ideas for the committee to pursue if it really wants to work on this issue. We can make it safer for student athletes who report harassment and sexual misconduct. We See, now you've heard what this woman says. She starts off by saying trans kids join sports the same reason regular kids join sports. It's for fun and belonging and community. No, it has nothing to do with actual sport and competition. Because if she said that, then what would happen is that people would say it was a competitive advantage because this was a boy in girls sports. So I always go back to say, you know, you could basically, you know, destroy their logic with one or two questions. Simply just ask them if the sex you were born, male or female, does that matter in the realm of sports? Now, it, it's irrelevant which way they answer. And if they're smart, they won't answer the question. If they say yes, it does matter. Then you can basically say, okay, then you understand that there's a biological advantage for males in sports. Done and done, period. There's nothing else to say. There's a competitive advantage and it's un unfair to put men in female sports. But if they say no, it doesn't matter. What you have to do is respond in the way of saying, then good, let's get rid of the bounds that separate the male and the female leagues and sports. Let's just make one single sports league. 
There's no more WNBA. Just make the NBA. And whoever's better, the best person wins. You know, what would happen is there would no longer be female sports because men would come in and destroy females. And her next point is, you know, we have to make it easier to allow reporting for harassing an SA uh, in, you know, trans mixed sports. Well, you want me to tell you how you almost knock it down to zero? Don't allow trans women in female sports. The men that dress up like women, they're way more likely to sexually harass a female than other females. At least that other female, you, you know, that woman has a, you know, a physical equivalent. Because even with me being 40 and out of shape, I am physically stronger than most of your female athletes. Not all of them, because they have trained. But you put a, a regular basic amateur, you know, athlete up against, you know, even the most professional female athlete. That woman is getting crushed. There's no competition. And honestly, the only way that any of this is going to get better or change or get fixed is if women stand up and say they've had enough. Because at the end of the day, it really doesn't affect men. Because you never hear about trans men, you know females who who pretend to be men coming in and taking a man's spot in the NBA that would never happen you would never have a female come in and take a position away from a, a male football player it's just not going to happen it's not going to happen so it's not really men even though men are the ones going out there and trying to defend women because we understand the physical advantage that we have generally but it's, it's going to have to take women to get, stand up and defend this. And a little bit better than Katie Britt. I mean, I know she probably meant well. But she needs to practice on her script rating. Because she sounded fake. And at that point, you might as well not did it. Because, you know, they're going to make fun of you. But hopefully, ladies, you stand up and you start speaking out against this. Uh, hopefully you, you vote right. In 2024 hopefully my mansplaining was enough to change your minds and if it was and you find yourself coming back why don't you hit the like and subscribe button why don't you leave me a comment why don't you share this with a friend of yours so i'm simple son and i'll see you guys in the next one peace